We make dua, every human being makes dua, and we're expecting that Allah Azza wa Jal will give us an answer. We're hoping that Allah will solve our problem. There are two kinds of duas basically for most of us. The one kind of dua, and I'm talking about the ones we make for ourselves. One kind of dua is we want a problem that we have right now to be solved. And of course, we make dua for our future. We make dua for ourselves, our children, and to take care of things in the future. Ya Allah, things are good right now. Ya Allah, keep them this way. Preserve what we have here. These are the kinds of duas that we make for ourselves. But the first thing I wanted to highlight is a quick reminder to all of you. Your dua getting answered immediately or not getting answered immediately has nothing to do with whether or not Allah is happy with you. There is no connection between those two things. And even if there was a connection, you will never know. You cannot guess what the reason is. You know, you have the case of Nuh salam, who was a very loving father. He invited his people to Islam for 950 years. Can you imagine? You think he made dua for his son? You think he made dua for his wife? Someone who cares so much about his nation, they spit on him, they insult him, and he goes back to them and makes dua for them. 950 years. You think he ignored his own son, his own wife? All those years of dua, and they didn't change. Isn't that the case? The reason I'm starting with that is people that were much better than we are, much, much better than we are, were also, they also had similar problems. There are parents in the audience that make dua for their kids. And they see that their children are going away from the religion. They're going down a dark path and they can't control it. And they're making dua for them. And they're not seeing that their dua is being answered. And now they're getting frustrated. Is there something wrong with me? Why isn't Allah answering? Well, you're not the first one to be put in that position. So the first thing I want to remind myself and all of you is that prophets, much before us, Allah mentions their du'as consistently in the Qur'an. And Allah also mentions their problems consistently in the Qur'an. In the case of Musa's mother, she makes du'a to Allah and a few hours later, she's reunited with her son. By the time the baby is hungry for the next meal, he's back with his mother. And in the other case, with the case of Yusuf salam, he was separated from his father. But he wasn't reunited with his father for many years. We are going to go through difficulty in life. And our, all of our problems are not going to be solved because we made a dua to Allah. Understand the reality of dua. What is the purpose of dua? When we make dua to Allah, sometimes in that dua we are making demands. It's true. We're making requests. But we should never forget that all of those requests, you know what they are at the end of the day? It's a humble slave of Allah turning back to Allah and begging Allah. But it's more than Allah sol solving your problem. It's just the act that you communicated with Allah. That's the most valuable thing. The fact that you actually engaged Allah in conversation, that is the goal in the end. Whether or not Allah will solve your problem imedi immediately is a, is a separate problem. Sometimes you go through problems and you ask yourself, what is my fault in all of this? Why do I have to go through these problems? What did I do to deserve this? Sometimes you and I go through difficulty because Allah knows something better is coming. Sometimes that better thing that is coming is for you. Sometimes it's for somebody else. Sometimes the benefit of your difficulty will come back to you. The re return will come back to you while you are still alive. Sometimes the return is meant to come back to you after you go, go back to Allah. What happened with Yusuf A father was separated from a child. It's a tragedy, isn't it? But imagine if he was never kidnapped, he would never be in the well. If he was never in the well, he would never end up in Egypt. If he was never in Egypt, he would have never grown up there and been, been thrown into prison. If he was never in prison, he would have never met those two guys he met in prison, whose dream he interpreted. If he never met those two people, one of them who got to live and go back to the king, and when the king saw a dream, a strange dream, he would have never said, wait, I know someone who can help interpret your dream. And if that never happened, and you know what that dream was? Seven good years in the country, and seven years, there's not gonna be any crop, any produce, any harvest, people are gonna starve to death. If Yusuf was not in prison, and then was taken out to interpret that dream at that time, there would have been an economic, financial, social, crisis in the country and hundreds of thousands of children would have starved to death. One child suffered for a few years. But because of that child's suffering, Allah's plan was to save a lot of families, a lot of fathers and mothers from losing their children to starvation. Because of the plan that Yusuf came back when he interpreted the, dream and, interpreted the dream and gave, when he became the treasurer. Sometimes the difficulty you and I go through is actually a small price to pay for a lot of khayr, a lot of good that will either come to me now or it will come to me in the akhirah, will come to me after I go back to Allah. So our du'as are not the same as placing an order. 